So can you guess by the color palette what game we're talking about today? If you guess Call of Duty Vanguard, you'd be right. So I spent most of my weekend playing Call of Duty Vanguard on the PlayStation Alpha for Champion Hill, and it was pretty good. I mean, I really enjoyed my time with it, other than a few things which we're going to talk about in a minute. But before we get into that, I mean, I really... I enjoyed the gunplay, I enjoyed the movement, I enjoyed the familiarity of the game because of the Modern Warfare engine. Now, I don't know if it's because of the new game feel yet, or if it's because of just wanting to enjoy the game, but I had fun with it. Um, I played it for about 20 hours, and I had a lot of fun. Uh, I just... I think that there's a lot of things that need to be worked on to make this game actually shippable, um, but there's also a few things that I think we also don't know yet as well that we need to figure out before we make a real judgment call on this game and hopefully the beta will set us in that path. But the first thing I want to talk about is actually the weapon feel. So the guns have a lot of recoil uh, but that can be kind of negated by the broken aim assist. I know a keyboard and mouse player complaining about aim assist but it's actually literally broken. So a lot of the objects in this game are destructible. Most of the cover is actually concealment, if that makes sense to you. So cover versus concealment is essentially cover is a cement block. Concealment is a wall of paper. One bullet is going to easily shoot through. The other one is going to take a little bit before it's no longer providing you cover. So most of the Vanguard map that we saw on Champion Hill was more concealment than cover which meant that the aim assist could actually easily see through that, as well as the high reveal distance, which, again, we don't know if that's actually specific to this mode, or if that's going to be a thing in 6v6 or Warzone going forward. I mean, there's a lot of unknowns at this point with this. But, either way, it's tracking people through hard objects, or hard objects anyway, and making it very difficult for keyboard and mouse players to be competitive. I understand that this was supposed to be a controller, you know, beta or alpha. But at the same point, obviously some of us are going to try keyboard and mouse because I'm a keyboard and mouse. But luckily, there were a lot of these settings from Modern Warfare coming over as well. So the tack to sprint, um, the tack slide, the and the tactical flipped button layout is back for you standard controller players because that's a massive advantage if you have a standard controller. Switch your tactical flipped that allows you to use your L1 and R1 buttons for your shoot, which are essentially mouse clicks, so helps get shots off a lot faster. But if you, if you weren't able to actually check out Champion Hill, essentially what it was was a team-based mode, duos and trios, in which you go into a couple of lobbies and do kind of a bracket-style system um, tournament. Last team standing with lives ends up winning. Everybody starts with $500, from there you can buy an AR or some plates. Usually you want to buy that AR, grab a few hundred dollars off the ground to start your game out, get those first few level ups, get the site, and then get the incendiary rounds. Next, level up the MP40 or your SMG and you are winning rounds pretty much left and right at this point. Now the guns themselves, we aren't totally sure of the recoil patterns because we aren't able to actually outfit the guns themselves with our specific loadout. Obviously, if I could add a field agent grip, agency suppressor, task force barrel, you know, I might have a little more idea of what the actual values are, um, be able to relate it to you guys a little more. But honestly, it feels like the MG34 from Modern Warfare is a lot like the MG42 in this game. That's a lot of recoil for a lot of people, and I wouldn't be surprised if it kind of gets dumbed down in the later versions of the game because of people are going to be complaining about this game is just too hard to play. Um, the recoil, I think, is more visual than physical. Um, so the few times I got to look at the recoil patterns, the recoil patterns looked fairly easy to control, but the gun is just hopping everywhere and the VFX are going absolutely crazy. Especially when you add the incendiary rounds in the BAR or the STG, whatever it was, because that is just absolutely obnoxious for anybody getting hit by it. But if you want to try to negate a lot of that recoil, what you can do is mount up and you're able to actually slide back and forth on a rail, and while you're doing that, you are... Penalized a little bit for the recoil. It's about half, I believe, um, but it definitely is an improvement over the standard recoil. You also have blind fire, and you also have mount kills. So that's all back, plus a blind fire mechanic, which is really nice and really satisfying when it works. Like I say, the paper environments really make the shotgun fairly viable here for a few different ways. You can really break down environments with a shotgun and then follow it up with an STG. 
and use that to your advantage. I think the shotgun is very, very specifically, you know, use thing. It's just, it's such, the recoil is crazy. Um, check out Gumi. Uh, he's probably gonna have a little more in-depth view of the shotguns than I will here. I didn't really get a chance to play with them that much. I played more with the SCG as I was going for wins. But uh, his link is in the description down below. Check him out as well. When it comes down to actually winning games, a lot of it is just simple gun skill and map knowledge. The spawns are broken as it is in any Call of Duty. The guns are heavy with recoil. There's a lot of VFX on the guns, especially right now with the incendiary rounds. And But all that kind of comes to a head, especially when we start talking about the TTK values of these guns. So let's compare the TTK values of the Vanguard guns against the Cold War and Modern Warfare and Warzone variants and how they differ all in all that. So as we'll notice here, the TTK values lay somewhere between Modern Warfare and somewhere between Cold War. Leaning, leaning a little more Cold War in a lot of instances, but leaning Modern Warfare in some. Uh, the game has a really unique balance and feel. The guns definitely do feel balanced. I don't think that any gun felt overpowered at all, other than with the incendiary rounds, which need to absolutely go. But when it comes to the STG, we're sitting at four shots to kill. That's not entirely terrible when you consider the fire rate is significantly slower than most of the other counterparts. The BAR is three shots to kill, which again, is a very slow firing gun. We're sitting at like 380 rounds per minute. Um, this gun is, it feels slow um, and it definitely is penalizing for you missing your shots. And you definitely notice that in Vanguard, which makes you feel like you are struggling more than you actually are. The MP40 is a four shot kill while the Thompson is a five shot kill. Obviously the Thompson shoots significantly faster than MP40 and it is going to feel that way in game. You're gonna feel like you have a lot more forgiveness with the Thompson than the MP40. So just kind of keep that in mind. The DP-27 comes in at four shots while the MG-42 comes in at five shots. Obviously the MG-42 comes in at a very quick like 1030 fire rate. So that's extremely forgiving, but the recoil on that obviously is going to be significantly higher than anything else because of the fire rate. Now looking at the Modern Warfare M4, we see we have a fire rate of around 809 rounds per minute and the TTK is all kind of how they align up. I mean, the guns throughout the time period seems like obviously the Modern Warfare guns are going to shoot a little bit faster, but, you know, that just kind of is what it is with the time advancement with these games. But tell me, what do you guys think about the TTKs in the comments down below? Are you guys happy with TTK and Vanguard? Do you guys think that it's going to be too fast, too slow? Um, when you also need to consider that, look at the values of the damage on a lot of these guns, and consider the Cold War health is 150, Modern Warfare is 100, Vanguard's also 100 as far as we could tell. Um, and then we look at Warzone with 100 health, which obviously is Modern Warfare as well. Um, take a look at that and then consider that a lot of the damage values from the guns from Cold War and Modern Warfare aren't really changed other than the stoner. Um, which means that potentially we could be seeing with a known damage value of 29 on the STG that we have a potential TTK in, in Warzone for the STG, but I'm not quite sure how this is going to stack up with the other guns that might be totally just irrelevant at that point. But that's what I've got for you guys for right now, my impressions on Vanguard and a few statistics that I can figure out for you guys. If you guys like this video, give it a like. If you like me, give me a subscribe. Have a good one, guys. I'll see you around.